Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm here with Dr. Scott Lynn, who is like one of the top ground force experts in the world. So for people who haven't seen yet, what is ground force in relation to the golf swing? Um, there's lots of different ways to use the ground. That's what we find everybody uses the ground slightly differently. So I generally categorize it into one of three categories, right? We kind of move side to side, which is kind of a horizontal force producer. Yeah. We can rotate and move in this plane, which is kind of a torque or a rotational player. Mm -hmm. And then we can move up. So this, that's where you think of like Lexi Thompson, Justin Thomas, people that like jump off the ground. Those would be more vertical force producers. Horizontal torque and vertical. Yeah. Okay. So um, when we hear like, I've heard like tour coaches talk about like, oh wow, he uses the ground so well. Mm -hmm. What does that, what does that mean? I don't really know. There's lots oh, okay. of different ways to use the ground, right? Okay. So um, everybody produces all of those three forces. Um, I mean, I think the people that actually jump off the ground, I guess people could say, well, he uses the ground well because you can see it. Okay. Like, right. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, there's lots of different ways. I mean, people get so used to or so interested in like Scotty Scheffler because the feet are moving around. But yeah. there's a lot of people that I've measured that use the ground really well and their feet don't move. Yeah. It's just efficient for them. So like, I don't really know what Colin that Moore means. Colin Morikawa uses the ground really well. Really but well. you wouldn't know it unless you were on the Yeah, and you can measure yeah. these. So yeah. there's lots of things. And I think it's more about matching up to you. So there's not one perfect ground pattern for everyone, yeah. everyone slightly differently. So we try to tune those forces, how much of each of those you're using to each individual. Right, so that's something that we've been doing at the Be Better Golf Schools that we've done with Scott this weekend and a couple months ago, we'll be doing it again. But like, that's why we've seen such good before and afters because a lot of people are, are saying, like we have a, a golfer here that said to me like, oh, I always thought this was a, a fault to use my right leg. So I've always tried to be on my left leg, but you know, no, it's like now I can use it and yeah. you fire with that. Okay, so Scott's been doing some research uh, uh, recently. This is the reason for this video. And, and Scott in the last probably six months has seen more regular amateur golfers than he's seen in the last six years mm -hmm. or something like that. He's seen a lot of regular golfers. Anything from, you know, plus handicaps to, to 20s. And then uh, Scott, what you've seen is you've started to see this connection in the and the force that you use best in the ground to what hand plane works the best for you. So could you kind of explain that for us? Yeah, so this kind of came from the work that we're doing in baseball, because okay. been, we've been doing a lot of work in baseball, and obviously in baseball, the ball's not on the ground anymore. So right. it's up in the air a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you have the baseball bat there? I, it's okay. Unfortunately, I don't, but that's okay, yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, so if the, if, the, if the ball's up in this plane more, you can see that I'm gonna have to be a lot more rotational to try to hit it. Okay, I'll, sw I'll swing some, so just sh kind of talk to us about sure. what's going on. You can so if you so think about if, it, in both baseball and golf, here, yeah, yeah, wanna, sure. Yeah. In both baseball and golf, if you look at the path the club takes, like, you know, if you draw the net kind of plane that the club f goes through or mm -hmm. the, the yeah. bat goes through, obviously the the baseball swing is going to be much more kind there. of tabletop plane and then the golf swing than the golf swing, which is much more like a up and down. So basically the club's moving in a combination of frontal and transverse planes. And yeah. obviously we know there's not one single swimming plane, but kind of looking at where your hands are at the top to where the ball is, the kind of net plane is going to be different if my hands are up here versus if they're back here. Right, right, right. right. And so I'm saying, so our, uh, do, sorry, do, sorry, sorry are, are baseball players using more, more torque, tor more yeah. torque than torque, golfers yeah. do usually. Yeah. Okay. And what we're finding, which is really interesting in baseball, they have a negative torque before impact with the ball. Really? But we don't see that too often in golfers, right? the main breaks we're using in golf is like the lateral breaks or the horizontal breaks. Yeah. Whereas baseball players have this negative torque before they hit the ball. Um, and so that's why I think the transverse plane is so much more important. So anyways, coming from baseball and actually what I'm um, coming from baseball to golf. Now I'm thinking, well, the ball's on the ground, but there's lots of different ways. Like we can move a little closer to it. And if I move a little closer to it, I'm, my net plane has to be a little more upright, right? Yeah. If I get a little further away from it, my net plane has to be a little more transverse plane. And so, I'm finding if golfers are really good at creating transverse plane forces or torque forces, yeah. we got to get a little deeper hands okay. to match that up. Because mm -hmm. that means that, that I'm moving more in this net plane to the ball. So you think of like Matt Kuchar. Uh -huh. I've measured Matt Kuchar before and he's all transverse plane. He's all torque. Yeah. He barely has any horizontal force. Uh -huh. But now if you think of somebody like DJ or Bryson where their hands are way up here, yeah. they got to use some horizontal forces oh, okay. because that's a, the net plane is a little bit more of the frontal plane. So all the golfers we had today who are right leg dominant and were producing a lot of horizontal forces, when I told them to reach the club a little more to the sky than to the wall behind us, yeah. they generally hit it better. Speed went up, oh, strike okay. got better. So if they could match their hand plane to what they were best at doing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, that becomes, and I've seen that quite often, and it could go both ways, right? You, if you want somebody to be more transverse plane rotational, 
you could tell them or you know to get their hands flatter and then hopefully the lower body reacts to that so it just has to be a matchup between what the lower body is doing and what the, what the position the club is in. All right, let's give them an example. So I, uh, put me through kind of that close your eyes, spin sure. test. Okay. And uh, Mike, you can get behind him maybe to, to try to piggyback on All right. some of the things he's seeing. So I really like this test to determine what your leg dominance is. Okay. So hop up on there, good. So Should I get off for calibration? No, you're good. you're good. Yeah. So just stand in a normal kind of standing posture. Yep. Put your arms out to the side in a T. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do is you're going to close your eyes and then spin your arms to the right while keeping your head somewhat pointed forward. Good. Perfect. Okay. So this is kind of a survival test, right? When your yep. arms are moving to the right and your eyes are closed, you're just trying to not fall over. Yeah. So I kind of want to see where your body finds balance. And so it'll measure that really quickly. And then where I'm going to look is at the pressure shift and see how much you get into one side or the other. Okay. Sorry, we had the launch monitor turned on, so it's just looking for launch monitor data. There it goes. Figured out that it wasn't any there. All right. So if I zoom in on his pressure shift, Brandon stays extremely centered throughout that. So you can see you start 52.48. Yeah. And then when you start to turn, Oh, that little dot is yeah. hovering right in the center. Right around 50-50. It never gets more than about 52 into either foot. Oh, there's a 55% into the right foot. I still don't consider that to be a massive pressure shift. So generally, if I see a little more than 55% into one foot yeah. during the turning motion, which I didn't see in you, um, then I would consider that to be a right or left dominant, but you're pretty centered. So okay. that tells me that torque is gonna be an important component to your- And we've done that before where in my golf swing, yeah. I slide a lot. Yeah. But when we've tested certain things, I can produce a lot of yeah. torque. Yeah. So that's always been the thing we've tried to, to do more of. So this is where with you, if we're saying that torque should be your dominant force, uh -huh. then we've got to get a deeper, deeper hands. Hands deeper yeah. and more, okay. So should I try to hit one? Sure. Cool. First driver I've hit in two days. Okay. <laughs> do we got a dot on there? I do actually, an Perfect. old dot. Okay, <laughs> it should work then. From months ago or something, or last time we did this. Okay. Um, this is just going to be normal golf swing. Okay. I'm not going to think about anything. changing anything yet. It's a good ball. Yeah, nice and straight. About. Okay, so 110 speed. One four six smash, which is good on foresight for sure. Um, I, yeah, so tons of horizontal 280 force. So go check out these graphs with uh, Scott here, Mike. Tons of horizontal force. Yeah, so yep. you're way above the tour average in horizontal force, and you get 84% pressure into your right side. Mm -hmm. So the 84% oh, pressure yeah. is is a little more than 80. So I'd say that's slightly right side dominant swing and your forces are definitely right side dominant because you got tons of horizontal force, medium torque and very low vertical. Yeah. So you're swinging very right leg dominantly. So if you want to continue doing this with your lower body, which is fine, I would say your hands would just have to get higher to match yeah. what you're doing currently. I would like to be able to unlock my torque a little bit. Okay. You know? Yeah. So, so then I would do a couple torque drills and try to change. So the couple things for you to create more torque is you got to stay on your left side a little more. So have a little less pressure shift to the right. Yep. And then we could do some torque drills to try to add some of that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So first give me one where you're just centered up your pressure shift a little more. So here I'm going to stay centered rather than yeah, this. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to stay more centered. Oh, hang on one sec. Let me turn that on. Okay, go ahead. All right, staying more center. Yeah. Okay. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was same, 109 for the speed. Okay, same speed. I ran out of right arm a little bit, which shows me that I probably slid quite a bit. Yeah, didn't change much. So you change your pressure shift for sure. Okay. So your pressure shift now was way left. I didn't, yeah, I usually kind of jam into that right leg. No, so this was only 65 to the right. So okay. it was a lot less pressure shift. So that would be, I mean, we're kind of playing a Goldilocks game here. Yep. 
So give me halfway between that one and the previous one you had. And then give me one more thing then then torque wise if I want to torque right yeah on well, the on the on this yeah I would have more. to get the we can do a band drill first but okay. let me get the, let's get the press shift dialed in and then okay. we'll add the forces. for sure so we're going so so the first one I really jammed into this right leg and yeah. turned the second one I just like was on a so bar give me a thing 50 percent so I'm, I'm going into that right leg but not as firm as before yeah. okay ish okay I know live live crew here <laughs> watching it's like home improvement A little off the toe? Yeah. Okay. That was, that was a little faster though. 111. Okay. And the pressure shift was 83. So yeah, you centered it up a bit. Okay. Um, so that, that if you want to use torque, and I would say, let me see here. your torque didn't uh, go up at all so no let's give you some torque drills torque drills do you have okay. like grab an iron out of your bag so we don't For bend sure. your driver too much okay come back here so we're not gonna fall over mm -hmm. put it behind you I'm just below my butt yeah move your mm -hmm. hand to the other side so that it doesn't slip okay yeah. so give me a backswing feel now turn through and let me pull you over okay Good. Get right up that off that trail side, and I want the butt of this club pointed at the wall. Okay. Good. That's really good. Give me another one. Go. Good. I can't pull you over anymore. Good. One more. Good. Okay. Give me that. Okay. I can do that. Okay, yeah, that feels different. I like that. Center up your press shift you ready? and give me some of that. I'm ready when you are. Yep, already. So center, centered, slightly more centered pressure shift. Yeah. And then I'm gonna pull, pull stretch that band. It's longer. We are 113, so that's three there miles an hour more. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Perfect. And your torque went up. Quite a bit. Went from 146 to 158. How's the vert? Not to. Not good. Not to pinch every. Okay, not good. All right. <laughs> so, that created more torque. So give me one of those now. Yeah. With a little deeper hand path. Okay, deeper. Hand. So yeah. I'm gonna feel like my hands go towards our wall instead of the sky. Instead of the sky. Yeah. Or, I like to say the club as an external cue. Club yep. goes more towards the wall than the sky, and then give me that lower body. Feel. Yep. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> uh, that's when I get a pinned like that. Sometimes it goes over, you know. Yeah. So I do have to be a little more patient. Yeah, okay, that was a one twelve though. Yep. Give me, give me a couple more to get used to it. Always looking at the bright sky. It's, it's yeah. Kind of, so towards the right, so I'm getting a little less into this than normal. Yeah. This this right leg post. I'm reaching the club back towards the towards the wall. Yeah. And then I'm stretching the yeah, band. I'm turning through it. So we go. Just like that, I think. <laughs> ah. Yeah, it's tough. Um, yeah, it's I liked when you were doing the torque drill over there with the band, you had like a real torque trigger. It was kind of a. What do you mean a torque it was, trigger? It was like a Matt Wolf kind of like you kind of open, like open your hips then shut them, like. Like do the backswing move first. You kind of went. But you didn't do that. You had a little trigger before you kind of went. Oh, it went. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. So gotcha. I want like a little less Kyle Berkshire trigger and a little more Matt Wolf trigger, like a more so rotational. That's like yeah, exactly. Versus a rock. Versus a rock. Okay, yeah. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Mm. 
really close. Yeah. Mm. 13 again. Okay. I think I can do a lot better. Give me some more patience. Any difference? Um, the torque's good. It's 161. Your 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 verticals or your, sorry, your horizontals are still really high. I think that's why this this hand path change is really tough for you. Oh, okay. Give me like a medium. So show me your original backswing, like just position wise. Okay, now show me what you're trying to do. Give me halfway between those two. Okay, that's yeah. like going towards that. Yeah. Okay. So close. <laughs> Is Darn. that a little toey? Well, no, I just hit the outside of the ball a little bit. That was 114 though. Okay, yeah, so your speed's coming up yeah. for sure. Torque is going up. Good. That's a good pressure shift. Your pressure right. shift is, yeah, 83 into the trail side, so. Okay. So less pressure. I'm ready. Ready? Uh, give it a second till it beeps. Really accentuate yeah. that torque trigger, because I think you're doing a little yes. Berkshire. Go ahead. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's a little slower, but I think th th that was one of my best balls. That yeah, was, 112? Yeah, well, it was one 112, but I felt like I got into the ground the way I wanted to. Yeah, that was the highest carry, 294 carry. Yeah, 294 carry was good. That's the highest one you've had so far. Okay. 160 torque now, so your torque's coming up. Good. Really what, what was it like when I did my baseline one? Uh, my first swing. What was the torque? Let me see. Uh, 146. Okay, good. Yeah. Cool. All right. Here we go. So 146 originally. And let me just show that last one was 160. The only problem is we haven't changed the horizontal force much. It's still really high. So that's why I think the medium, you know, the just right medium hand. hands. Yeah. Yeah. So not really flat because you can't uh, that's kind of built in your DNA that horizontal yeah. force so I'm gonna try then all right I'm gonna try to torque a lot but not slide much yeah yeah medium hands medium medium hand plane right yeah yeah so that's about like that yeah okay Ooh, that'll pit Come on, yeah. baby. Should be, yeah. 13 again. We got you to 14. Yeah, I can do a couple more. Torque went down a bit on that and vertical went up. Oh, okay. Or horizontal went up. 29 horizontal and one fifty. See, that's funny because that's, all right. So, yeah, I can't really think anything hard. Even if I think less horizontal, it's going to be more. <laughs> so I, I have to think right. just only torque. Replace it all with torque. All right. So here's the, I'm going to try just a medium hand plane full torque shot. Yeah. Which is. Should have torqued it pretty good there. <laughs> Two ninety nine carry. Wow. On a slice. Right. Open face. One fourteen. Good. Okay. Did that torque more? Yeah. Oh it yeah. One sixty nine. You're almost at one seventy now. Okay. Good. So I think that's. What's that's to, what's tour average torque? Uh, way lower than that. That's oh. near the top of tour average plus one standard deviation. Okay, so you're. Probably about 150 the average. All right, sort. this is gonna be. I'm gonna do two, do two more. One more that's like super extreme, and then one more that's like a golf a golf course swing. Okay. So super extreme is gonna be, yeah, because I've done so much uh, Dr. Kwan stuff. You know, I've gone here, step, step here, kind of like what Kyle does. Yeah. So that's all in this frontal yeah, plane, yeah, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna do like a torquing Kwan thing, which would be. Mm hmm. Yeah. Totally. That's yeah. a little more what like Martin Borgmeier does versus. Yeah, like he's charge. like. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, I'm going to try. Don't be mad at me if I rip this carpet off. No, no, I'm good. We've got lots of those carpets. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Okay. So this is my extreme one. I don't care if I miss the face. I just want to. Okay. <laughs> good. 117 club Ooh, head speed. Okay. So. That was good. I punished that tree. Yeah, you did. <laughs> okay, now give me a golf course swing. All right. 
That's re that's really good though. If I can, mm -hmm. I like that. That, yeah, that Borgmeier stomps. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so here's for the golf course. Oh no! Oh, I gotta hit another one. Okay. Edit uh, that one out. Yeah. Fourteen. Speed's definitely up. Yeah. Okay. So give me the club moving diagonal. So not up, not to the wall. Club moving in the backswing diagonally. Yeah. So not up, not to the wall, halfway in between. Yep. And then I'm going to use my, yeah, like kind of the Borgmeier. So this is the, the Kyle stomps are like this. Yeah. And then the Borgmeier stomps are basically yeah. shearing the ground like that. The last one you got like 90% into your right side. So we still got to think okay. centered pressure shift. Centered 45 degrees. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a drop kick, but it's a not toey. So. Yeah, I'll do one more. Fifteen. Okay. That's, yeah, that is better. It's not seventeen, but it's. Uh, yeah. So we're going this way, this way. I think I got enough juice for one more shot <laughs> on the foresight. <laughs> oh no! Damn it! <laughs> Maybe getting tired. Oh, shit. It's hot up there. No, it's. Just, I'm over rushing it. 13. Okay. That's good, though, because 13 was a stretch before. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There it goes. That's better. I even did a little bit of a rainbow step there. Yeah. I don't know if that translated anything. All right. 13 and great smash. Yeah. 146 smash, two, 284. Good. So that was a good right. center. So give me just a, a re recap of those those forces that changed there. So that was a good centered pressure shift. Yeah. 82 into the right side. Hang on, let me find the first one. So this was the original one. You can see 146 torque and 27% vertical. So you have a ton of, or sorry, horizontal. Tons of horizontal, low torque. His maximum torque was his maximum club head speed, which was 117 right here. You can see he, oh no, that wasn't it. Where was it that he got a shoot ton of torque? There we go, 169 torque. So that was one of your maximum ones. And notice how that brought horizontal down to 17%. Okay. So that's a more rotational swing, which would match him uh, more hands back to the wall versus up. Great. Um, but that last one you hit, which is kind of the golf course shot, you went from 146 to 157 torque, so you've added, you know, 11 force factor. Look how low the horizontal force went, so it's come way down. Yeah. And his pressure shift went from getting like, I think it was like 90% into the trail side, to. Yeah, 82. those arrows aren't quite as yeah, long. Yeah. 82. So, that's a little bit more of a centered swing. Yeah. I think you could hit it right side dominant, um, even though you didn't test that way. Like your rail, you've you've geared that swing so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That you can still get into your right side, get your hands high, and just glide into it and smash right, it. Right, right. That could work as well. So. so step out here for a second, Scott. We'll wrap it up. Okay, so going for so for people, for me, and for people that want to get more rotational force in their swing, more torque force in their swing, because you've worked with some people not just like, you know, the course of two days like today, but like over a long period. Mm -hmm. The people that you've seen increase those, those things that have carried out into the golf course, mm -hmm what has been like their kind of path to success that you've seen them do as far as band work, doing it on the course? I mean, I like doing a ton of band work as much as possible because okay. you have to change a pattern. So do the band work as much as possible and then just kind of let it bleed over into the golf swing. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to do it. It's hard to have a downswing thought because that torque happens in the downswing. So oh, I can okay. set you up to do it, but thinking I got a torque in the downswing, it's such a short period of time in the downswing. So yeah. I like just doing tons of drills and then, or the band work I think is great because you could do it all the time, right? Yeah. You could do anywhere you are, yeah. All of them all the mm -hmm. time. So, and let that bleed over into your swing. But that's not for everyone. So, yep. just because, you know, everyone likes to get open to it and it's not for everyone. Um, so, if you are right leg dominant, then you can use those. Like today, right? We had a guy that didn't know that he, he could get into his right side yeah, and use horizontal fault. forces yeah. and get your hands high. That's fine. That works for a lot of people and cool. they can hit good shots. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're interested in getting a lesson on the swing catalyst, 
there is a link below where it's, there's like authorized instructors. Also, we're going to be doing more schools with Scott somewhere in America, maybe maybe here in San Diego, maybe somewhere else. But uh, you can stay tuned to that by going to bebettergolf.net be slash school and uh, click the subscribe button. You'll see whatever's going on. Bye. Great. Thank you. All right.